Yes. Hello, everybody. This is Gerald Salenti, and it's Wednesday, November 8th, 2023. And we have with us the man of America that I would love to see as president of the United States. A man with a heart, a soul, knowledge, caring, and kindness. Someone that knows the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence, that anyone, I'll put anyone up against him, nobody knows it better than him, Judge Andrew Napolitano. Judge, thanks for being here. And as I said, with all my heart, and I know this business upside down, inside out, the uh, campaign business, that's how I began my career running major political campaigns in Westchester County back in the 70s. Westchester is the richest county in America. And I was the assistant to the secretary of the New York State Senate, designed and instructed a course called American Politics and Campaign Technology, basically how to run political campaigns. And I taught it at St. John's University. So when I say that you should be the person that should be the president of the United States and that the people are looking for somebody like you, this isn't just a lot of, you know, talk. This is the reality. The people are fed up with a crime syndicate that we call a government. And we need somebody like you to be in charge of this country, to bring back life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness that's been stolen from us. So thanks for being here, Judge. Well, thank you for your kind words, Gerald. And it's always a pleasure uh, to be with you every Wednesday. Yeah, but I'm serious about this. We need you because this country's finished without someone like you running it. There's nobody else. There's nobody in the, in, the, in, in, the, in the limelight that is going to take us in the direction that we need to go. And as you well know, you know, I was a huge supporter of uh, RFK Jr. Because I believe that he was pro-peace and anti-war. He was. He was. At the time you and I uh, communicated with him, he was the champion of pro-peace and anti-war. And then after the um, Hamas attack to Israel, he, he did a 180. He now supports the genocide that uh, the Israeli uh, military is uh, perpetrating on the Palestinian people in Gaza. Yeah. And one day, one night, we were having dinner with uh, you and, and myself, Scott Ritter. And we were talking about Kennedy's stance on Israel. And what did you do? I texted him and told him we were talking about it, didn't expect anything. And I got a long defensive reply. You and Gerald have to leave me alone. Everybody around me is telling me I'm wrong on Israel. I know I'm right in Israel. My family has a history with Israel, blah, 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 blah. But Bobby, I love you, but this is a, this is a deal breaker. Uh, and then I know what happened to you before this event, you uh, donated to his campaign and then trying to get your money back was like pulling teeth, but eventually they did because the last thing in the world they want is you with your megaphone saying, Bobby won't give me my money back. It's not the same Bobby to whom I gave my money. And it wasn't, he did a 180 degree on the most fundamental uh, 180 degree change on the most fundamental issue of our day, war and peace. War and peace. Well, I love yeah, him I, as a person. I donated, I donated the maximum that you're allowed to donate. Right. So that's how much I believed in him. And that's why I'm saying we need somebody like you. You're not, not somebody like you. We need you. We need you. And, and all the people should do everything they can to, to, to have Judge Andrew Napolitano run for president. And, you know, you, again, there, there's nobody there. We are on, again... As you well know, in the Trends Journal, before the two days before Russia invaded Ukraine, Ukraine. Yeah. the cover of the Trends Journal, from COVID war to Ukraine war to world war, people forgot about the, the Ukraine war. That's over now. World War Three has begun. World War III has begun. It has now escalated into the Middle East. The people have absolutely no idea of the facts. In talking about Israel, I talk to people. Do you know about the Judicial Reform Act? 
the, you know about the 39 weeks of protests where hundreds of thousands of people were taking to the streets week after week after week after week in Israel? Duh. And I said, when all else fails, they take you to war. And now the information's out there that Netanyahu knew, the government knew that this attack was going to happen. Hmm. It's all in your trends journal, not our facts, the facts that are being reported. Are, is that being reported in the Israeli press? It's Haaretz reported some of it, yes. And and yeah. and other and this this is this is from the intelligence sources. And and the United States had warned them, Egypt had warned them, and Netanyahu threw one of the generals out and said, well, I don't want to go get out of here. They wanted this to happen because. They couldn't, the people couldn't stand Netanyahu. The same thing happened with little Georgie Bush. People forget the dot-com bust, America in a deep recession. They couldn't stand Bush. And then 9-11 happens. Well, yep. same, thing, same thing with FDR and uh, Pearl Harbor. But this Netanyahu thing is very serious. He'll end up in jail when this war is over. So he has an incentive not to end the war. That's he right. told ABC News uh, just yesterday that he expected that Israel will be responsible for security in Gaza, meaning that nice? they, they will post prison guards in the concentration camp. Yeah. Because the longer he can extend this, uh, the longer he stays in office. But once it's over and they have their investigation, and one thing about the Israeli government, they investigate everything. They have their investigation. All fingers will point at him. He will lose not only his job, but his liberty. Yeah. But he'll, he'll, this guy is a maniac. He's the longest serving prime minister in, 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 in Israel, in and out, up and down, keeps coming back. He will do anything, anything to remain in power. I'm sorry to say I agree with you. I say sorry because that anything includes the destruction of innocent human life, which happens as we speak including the lives of Israelis. Yeah. And again, uh, the cover of our magazine this week is Crusades 2000. It's all this is. So whose side is your God on? Mm. This is a Crusades. And again, people have no idea. This is the cover judge of the, this, this is, Back in 2006, we wrote this in the Trends Journal. And we talked about, again, people have no idea about this. Regardless of what England's reasons or intentions, self-serving or otherwise, Crusades 2000 was set in motion by the 1917 Balfour Declaration that laid the foundation for Israel. Quote, His Majesty's government views with favor the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people and will use their best endeavors to facilitate the achievement of this objective. His Majesty, some bastard from a crime syndicate called the, the, the nobility in England, saying what they should be doing in Palestine? Well, the world uh, accepts that nonsense, just like the world accepted uh, Harry Truman's declaration that Palestine was now Israel. Yeah. You know, when when this is the tyranny of the majority, people accept as legitimate what majoritarian governments declare. And the tyranny of the majority is often worse than the tyranny of a madman. Everybody knows the madman is mad, but most people give credence to the majority. Yeah. And um, we have the mad men in charge in a country near you. Look at the little freaks. And it, by the way, your article that's coming out tomorrow this is what everybody should read. And you find more, by the way, you go to the judge's channel and you got to see the people that he's putting on there day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. Judging freedom. Go to this channel and the article that you have coming out tomorrow, unconstitutional killings. Yep. Unconstitutional killings. And you were talking about madmen. And... They are the leaders of our country, and you name them. I'm talking about George W. Bush and Barack Obama and Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Trump the least, Bush the worst, but now Biden dragging out. I, I point out the people he killed uh, with drones the, 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 and, and crowed about it. 
but now dragging us into two wars, neither of which has been uh, declared by Congress. They have a real albatross on their hands with uh, Ukraine, uh, Gerald. The world now accepts and understands that Ukraine lost. American and EU diplomats are speaking below the radar about negotiation. They're not going to get nearly as good a deal as Russia and Ukraine agreed to two years ago before the United States and Great Britain got involved and said, we'll give you everything you want. Remember Kissinger? I, I, I disagreed with them in many things, but this line is true. It's bad to be America's enemy. It's worse to be America's friend. America relies on you, promises you it has you as your back. And just like Vietnam, just like Iraq sells you uh, down the river. I don't know how the neocons and the people around Biden are going to get out of this other than by diverting our attention to another war, the one in Gaza. Yeah. And again, what's very important, you said to divert our attention. As I keep saying, when all else fails, they take you to war. Yes. And yes. we are in World War Three. Why do presidents kill? Because they can get away with it. And why do they get away with it? Because there is a pattern of presidential killing. I mean, this actually started with Abraham Lincoln, the first war in the history of the world to target civilians. But in the modern era, it was Harry Truman and the atomic bombs. He murdered hundreds of thousands of innocent Japanese civilians a week before Japan was going to was going to surrender anyway. And since that time, his successors know if you kill and if you kill somebody you've demonized, we hate the Japanese, we hate the Russians, we hate the Islamists, we hate the Iraqis, you can get away with the killing. This article you have, by the way, you mentioned about Obama and, and Bush and Biden and Trump, but you left one out. A murderer of the first degree, Bill Clinton. Yes. Yeah, I, start, I started with Bush because of 9-11. Obviously, you can go back to all presidents uh, after Harry Truman engaged in some sort of presidential killing without due process and without a declaration of war, even Eisenhower, even Reagan. Yep. You say the purpose of the Bill of Rights, the first 10 amendments to the Constitution, is to protect personal liberty by restraining the government. The Fifth Amendment prohibits killing persons, restraining liberty, and taking property without due process. In a country at war, lawfully and constitutionally declared by Congress, obviously the president can use U.S. military to kill <coughs> the military of the opposing country. And if an attack on the U.S. is imminent, the president can strike the first blow against military, the military of the entity whose attack is just about to occur. There are no other constitutional circumstances under which the president may kill. And then you go on to talk about how they keep the killing fields going. And, and it doesn't shock anymore, uh, Gerald. The world was shocked by uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, but Americans who had just been spoon-fed bitter hatred for all things Japanese for four years uh, were not shocked. The world was not shocked when Barack Obama evaporated an American, never charged with a crime, sitting in a, in a cafe uh, in Yemen. The world was not shocked when George Bush caused a million deaths and borrowed and spent three trillion dollars in the fruitless, useless invasions of uh, Iraq uh, and Afghanistan. Nobody was shocked when Trump boasted about using a drone uh, to kill a um, uh, Iranian general peaceably on his way to lunch in Iraq uh, with uh, some friends uh, of his. Uh, and now, why isn't anybody saying, well, why are we fighting Russia? Why are we using a corrupt Nazi-run vassal state to fight Russia. Why have we given them $100 billion? There was no reason for that. That argument falls on uh, deaf ears because uh, the, the pro-war party wants more war. How does Lindsey Graham explain this mess? 
that he and his neocon buddies got us into. Yeah, again, the American way, no peace, only war. You got this little boy blinking, by the way. He came out today, no ceasefire. You know, Blinken's uh, tour of the Middle East over the weekend was a dismal, humiliating public failure. Uh, Netanyahu, a monster and a killer, uh, uh, refuted uh, Blinken, refused to appear with him uh, at a press conference. The King of Jordan wouldn't be seen uh, with him uh, in public. The only person that I took pictures with was Abu Abbas, yeah. the head of the... Uh, uh, yeah. Palestine uh, Authority, He's, and Lincoln's not doing anything for the Palestinian uh, no. people. How can the same government, Biden's government, say we're in favor of a two-state solution when the Israelis are using guns that we gave them, not sold them, gave them, to slaughter innocent Palestinians? How can Biden speak out of both sides of his mouth like that? How can Blinken speak uh, out of both sides of his mouth like that? Is that what the American people have elected a government to do? You talk about because of domestic politics. That's the reason why yep. Israel has nothing to do with American national security. It's nothing. domestic politics, period. Yep. They want money. They want money. Look at all the money that Trump got from that guy. I forgot his name. Sheldon. What was his name? Oh, Adelson. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then Trump is the one that said, you could move your, your capital from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Well, he did, that, money. He, he did that to um, insult the other religions. Yep. Jerusalem is a city of Jews, Catholics, and Muslims. To claim that it is the capital of Israel is an insult to Muslims and Christians. Yep. Uh, Muslims and Christians don't count because you talk, this guy Blinken, when he went over the first time to, to Israel, he says, this is his words to Netanyahu, the murder in Netanyahu. I'm a Jew and I am the U.S. Secretary of State. I could give a damn what religion you are. Same here. Oh, oh and you're the, you're the head of the Secretary of State, so you're showing your power? How about saying you're an American? Oh, no, hey, I'm the Secretary of State. I shove my crap down the mouths of all Americans and they should swallow it. I'm a little arrogant daddy's boy. Don't you know who my father was? So, Gerald, this is even worse than you are describing it because we have a president who is essentially incapable of processing thoughts in his brain and coming to decisions in behalf of the American public. So for all practical purposes, Anthony Blinken is the president of the United States yep. for foreign policy purposes. Yep. He doesn't go to Joe for guidance. He goes to Joe to tell him what he's already decided to do. Watch this. Whoops. That's who's running our show, huh? As you said, he's not. This is the Obama administration. We said it when he got elected. Administrate. Oh, you forgot another arrogant, murderous Victoria Newland. Oh, she. Uh, they've either silenced her or she's eating her own crow. I haven't heard her complaining or boasting at all. Now that her her vassal state that she said would be a battering ram to drive. I'm paraphrasing. Vladimir Putin out of office uh, has uh, has failed. Yep. General Zeluzhny, the commander of the military, told The Economist magazine the war is at a stalemate. <laughs> uh, President uh, Zelensky exploded and uh, condemned him. And then the next day, a birthday present exploded and killed General Zeluzhny's chief of staff, himself a general. Yep. In his home in wow. Kiev. I didn't know that. Wow. And it did not come from Moscow. Again, you're looking at Ukraine with the European Union called the most corrupt country in, in, uh, in Europe. And 89% of the Ukrainian people in the, in the latest poll said the war was number one, corruption number two. 89% complaining yeah. about the corruption in Ukraine. It's a, it's a, it's a murderous country. And again, we, we, we had forecast from the very beginning 
and we're not the only ones, but uh, as, as McGregor and Scott Ritter, that there was no way, no way possible that Ukraine was going to beat Russia. We said it, and then with the whole counteroffensive, we made fun of it. We right. said, you know, again, the big lie, <laughs> Russia will lose. That's way back, the Trends Journal. And then the other one, don't count on the counteroffensive. You and know, now nobody made, talks about that. We made fun of the counteroffensive. Yep. Now, of course, everybody knows it got nowhere. But, Gerald, it cost 50,000 Ukrainian lives. They have wiped out <clears throat> almost an entire generation of young men yep. in, in that country. Yep. That will have um, a, socio-econo- a socioeconomic negative effect for years. Population, people to work people to rebuild it. Oh, rebuild it. The Federal Reserve will borrow money from the (laughs) Chinese, give it to American banks, who will loan it to Wall Street, who will give it to the builders, and the Federal Reserve will print more cash to pay the interest on the money that it borrowed from the Chinese. And And Ukraine will be happy, and Wall Street will be happy, and the construction companies will be happy, and the dead will be buried. And then this will happen again. And this is what you just said. Nobody says it like you, and that's why you should be president of the United States. And I'm serious about this. We we have to do something. Well, when you say it's dangerous, because when you say you're serious, you're like a dog in a meat truck. You don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, you, you. We need you. We need you, and and you know it better than anybody else. And um, we, we are at a critical time of life right now. If we don't stop, the, World War Three's begun. Yeah. It's begun. And again, it's going to end in nuclear annihilation. Did you ever hear of the Samson uh, option? Well, the Samson option, I guess, is to pull the temple down with you. That's right. That They, they say that if Israel goes down, they're going to nuke. It's nukes away. It Take isn't it interesting that a member of President Netanyahu, or Prime Minister Netanyahu's cabinet said the other day, uh, yep. we should nuke Gaza. Wait a minute. The Israelis have never acknowledged having a nuclear weapon. Federal law prohibits foreign aid to countries with nuclear weapons, except the five that the UN approved of. So if Israel has nuclear weapons, then foreign aid to Israel is unlawful. No wonder Netanyahu exploded when this cabinet member articulated a truth that everybody knows, but the Israelis will never admit to. Yeah, well, well, they have between 200 to 400 nuclear weapons. Yes, they do. So this is serious. This is, we are, we, the COVID war, the Ukraine war, and now the Israel war. The life changed since 2020, and it's going down quick. Yes. Judge, thank you for being here, and please consider running for president of the United States. And, and everybody out there, please go to the judge's channel. Judging freedom. He's giving you everything that you can't find anywhere else from somebody that knows the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and what America was founded on and what our founding fathers fought for to give us that's been stolen from us. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Gerald. All the best, my friend.